Okay, guys. So in this video, we're gonna um, we're gonna go through how to create a mesocycle in our uh, for our training. Um, so the first step we need to do is we need to really decide on what the goal of our uh, mesocycle is going to be. So obviously, you have to take into consideration the annual plan, and from there see this particular training block and like what are going to be the specific goals of this training block. So I've got here like just a five week block. It'll probably be a four week um, of overload and one week, uh, one week in week five of unloading. So let's make this just a really general, um, a really general, you know, early off season block. So we might want some hypertrophy in the program. We might want some acceleration and some aerobic capacity. So once we've decided on what the goal of the program is, we can then decide how we're going to manipulate volume and intensity. And for this sort of goal, um, we really want an accumulation of volume. That's what we're going to really want in the um, sort of that off season period. And the intensity is not as important right now. So we can probably maintain or even slightly increase intensity, but the key thing is to accumulate volume. So as I put the numbers into the cells here, it's going to appear on this graph, and that way we're going to get a visual representation of how our um, volume and intensity is going to um, change over the course of these five weeks. And what I want you to uh, understand here is that I'm going to be using representing volume pretty and intensity pretty arbitrar arbitrarily using a 1 to 10 scale and I'm going to explain why I'm, why I'm doing it like that in a minute so let's say volume is going to be start at like a 5 6 7 8 and then drop down the last week to a 4 in the unloading week, while intensity might just stay at a five the entire time, and then stay to five in the unloading week. So, as you can see here, our volume has gone up, 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 and our intensity has stayed the same. And then in that last week, we have a drop off in volume to, um, you know, reduce fatigue and recover and allow recovery. So that our next mesocycle, we can start a new overloading uh, parameter again. And so onto this sheet here, I've got pretty much the same thing, but this time we've got more weeks split up into three mesocycles. So let's keep the same. Let's keep this first week as the uh, this first mesocycle as exactly the same goals, and we'll have the exact same volumes and intensities. And we can we can plan this 15 weeks, maybe this is a 15 week off season and pre season program, for example, and we can now plan this so that um, we, you know, we can be peaked by this sort of maybe this is the start of the season or it's a competition or something like that. So let's keep this as the accumulation block. And then we're going to have this as more of a maybe the goals here are going to be, you know, strength, um, speed and slow power or something like that so now these qualities to build to build these sort of qualities that we intentionally match up uh together we don't really want um you know an accumulation of too much volume during that these sort of blocks because that's going to um that's going to accumulate a lot of fatigue so these qualities are more uh these uh yeah qualities are more about the intensity and the quality of work rather than just how much we can do. Um, you don't build speed by being fatigued and running slow. You, same thing with strength. Um, so let's, so maybe in this block we might have an increase in intensity and we might just have a maintenance of volume, something like that. So let's, um, let's keep the volume here at a, let's keep it at a five. Um, and let's drop it off in the last week but this time we're going to have the intensity um, increasing each week so let's start the intensity at um, higher than we wanted in in this block so let's start it at a six 
7, 8, and we'll go up to a 9. And then in the last week, we'll drop it down to... We'll, we've got to maintain the intensity very high, so we'll keep it at a 6, what we did in the first week. Again, remember, these are all arbitrary values. I'm just sort of making, you know, getting a general idea of how our uh, 15 weeks is going to look. I'm not planning for anything specific right now. And this last week, this is probably where we want to actually reduce volume and really peak that intensity so we're, you know, really prepared for our, um, our competition or season or whatever. So our goals here might be agility because it might be a, a team sport, we'll say change of direction. Change of direction, um, we might have fast power, so like plyometric type stuff. And then like strength maintenance, but I'll just keep it at that, something like that. So anyway, so to be really peaked for our competition or season, we need this volume to sort of, we probably want to start with a decent amount of volume to retain, you know, a good amount of fitness, but then we want that to reduce through the mesocycle. So we're going to start here, maybe a volume of around six, and we'll drop that down gradually, four, three, and end up with uh, maybe a two in this last week which is going to be like our taper week. Um, then our intensity, we still want that to be rising pretty high. So this is where our intensity is probably going to peak. So we're going to probably start at 7, 8, 9, and go all the way up to a 10 here. And then probably keep that at about a 9 or 8 for that. We'll keep it at an 8 for that last taper week. So as you can see now, we have a, a general visual representation of how we're going to plan these 15 weeks. And I'm going to explain now why I'm using these numbers rather than actually using proper data. So in this sheet here, I've basically planned out a um, an example mesocycle for um, this first block that we planned. So as you can see, our goals were sort of hypertrophy, acceleration, and aerobic capacity, and we had the volume increasing while the intensity was sort of staying the same. And this is the reason why I'm using arbitrary numbers on a scale. So I haven't filled everything out, um, but I filled out a few things. So in the program, we might have, this is just an example. I've just written Monday and Wednesday. There'll probably be two other days in reality, but this is just an example. So we might start with like some acceleration type work. So some three point starts, um, four by 10 meters, five by 10, etc., etc. Um, and then we might have some sort of jumping, some power activity, and then we might have our more hypertrophy type work. And as you can see, the volume, if we if we know that volume is sets times reps times uh, load or times work, then um, we can see that here the volume is increasing. We're doing more work each week, except for week five, obviously. And we're doing that in the sprints, we're doing that in the jumps, and we're doing that in the... Um, back squats and we have an actual percentage intensity here but the the problem is that if we calculate volume for a a box jump or a three point start that's not comparable to a um the volume of a back squat they're different movements they have different you know ranges of motion they have different intensity um measures so if we say the volume of week one for the back squat is if we do a quick formula, three times eight times 0 0.7, which is 70%, we get a volume for that exercise of 16.8. But then if we calculate volume of the um, three point start, we get four times 10 times, what's the, what's the intensity of three point start? It's maximal. So there's no real, there's no real way to compare these two um, numbers and I've got the same thing here with overhead press this is more of an upper body day with some aerobic stuff at the end so three by eight at 70 percent and then we have some interval runs uh, 20 seconds uh, 20 seconds at 90 percent and then 30 seconds at 50 percent and you got five rounds of that so how are we going to compare the total we can we can calculate total distance or total work done uh, total power or something for this um or total sp uh, we can do you know intensity in speed times uh the distance traveled or the time at that speed whatever it is but we still cannot really compare that 
to uh, these values we have here. And that's why I'm using those arbitrary values, because we run into these sort of issues. And I guess you, what you could do is you could get a total number um, and try and combine it all together. But then in the next block, if you have conditioning on a bike, for example, how is that comparable to uh, the interval runs that you did? If you have a different exercise, the, um, the range of motion is different. The uh, neural fatigue induced by that exercise is probably going to be different. For example, a seated um, dumbbell press, for example, is probably going to be less taxing than an overhead press, even at the same relative um, intensity. Or like, what if we have some Olympic lifts? How are we going to compare that to a back squat? They're completely different movements. Um, so it doesn't really work. So I don't think the specifics are necessary. I think a general plan is going to be the best way to do this, and then the um, the specifics can be written in the uh, actual mesocycle program when you write it. And then in order to actually know if we're doing too much volume or not enough intensity or something like that, that can all come from monitoring. So monitoring um, fatigue levels, monitoring performance, and that sort of thing, that's going to be a good way to measure actually if, if we need to increase volume more or we can compare the effects of this program versus this one. Uh, and that's all I got for you for this uh, video. Thanks for listening and hope you got something out of it.